Hey guys, I hope that I'm audible. And yeah, so it has been a very long time since we had a boot camp. Uh, the last boot camp that we conducted was on Netflix. Uh, but due to some medical emergencies, uh, I was admitted to the hospital for a few days, and then the doctor said to uh, be as cool as possible, bedridden for the next few weeks. So I was not able to complete the boot camp uh, for Netflix that happened. Uh, I apologize for the same. Here we are putting up the seventh day project right over here. For those who have already completed the sixth day, just try to complete the, this last day bootcamp project. We'll put down the links for the project uh, submission down in the description of the video so that you guys are able to submit the project and you will be able to get the certificates as well. Uh, the entire project has been made in such a way that you will be able to make the landing page for Netflix as we had previously discussed. What we have previously studied about HTML CSS, we'll be utilizing it right over here to complete the project and we'll be moving further from here. Okay, so I hope that you guys uh, will be enjoying the project. If you have any suggestions, anything else as well, just put it down in the, uh, in the comment section. And uh, from now on, I'm uh, very well. Okay, so I will be taking up more and more number of boot camps and I hope that you guys will be joining us and attending those boot camps as well. We'll be having a lot many number of projects, a lot many number of uh, boot camps on various different topics. So let's hope that we are able to enjoy and grow at the same time. So thank you so much guys for understanding this and see you soon in our future boot camps. So thank you so much. Let's continue on with the project right now. Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be walking through the procedure that can be used to make a Netflix clone using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Firstly, let's start off by looking at what the actual Netflix site looks like and then we'll move on to what the end product of this project must look like. So this is the actual Netflix site with the navigation bar here. You have the language drop down menu and the sign in button and then there is this email input bar. Here are some text and these are some cards within which we have some text and we have some animations right over here. Then we have these things and we have the footer. All right, so this is the actual Netflix site and this is what we are gonna be making today. So it also has the navigation bar as it is and it has the language menu, it has the sign in button and the email address input bar and these cards along with the animations and the footer. So let's hop on to the code. So here I have added the basic HTML uh, boilerplate and uh, here we have the meta tags. We have the meta tags and uh, we, this is the metadata inside the head tag which is typically used to specify the character set, page description, keywords, etc. And we'll change the title here. We'll change the title to what it looks like on the actual Netflix site. So this is uh, what we want to write. So let's write it here. Fix media watch TV shows online watch movies online okay so that was our title and when you go here on this page you can see that the title is reflecting on the tab and it is exactly the same as we have in the original netflix site so that was it and also inside the head we'll be linking our style sheet here So that was all about the head part of the code and now we'll move on to the body. So first of all, when we open the Netflix site, we see that you have a navigation bar right over here and uh, within the navigation bar, you have three items that are the logo of the Netflix, the language drop down menu and the sign in button. So let's move on to creating that. We'll keep our navigation bar inside the header. And the tag for navigation bar is nav. Let's just give it a class called nav bar. All right, and we'll keep the logo. That is, we'll 
keep the image of the logo inside a division because it will be easy to style and it will be easy to align the logo accordingly as we want otherwise if we'll just use the image tag and give it in directly inside the nav bar then it will be a bit problematic to resize it or to align it properly according to our own needs so we'll create a div here and we'll also give this a class uh let's say it is nav bar the netflix maybe all right so we'll use the image source here and uh, i have already downloaded the images that i need for this uh, one but you can also go to the internet and you can download it from anywhere or you can use a link from the internet directly itself you don't need to download the image i'll keep the alt as logo now let's see yes we have got the logo right over here but it is quite big and it is not perfectly aligned as we want it to be we'll do it later when we are styling this let's just add all the things we need right now in the navigation bar and then we'll move on to styling the navigation bar let's also add a class inside the image that we'll be needing when we'll be styling the logo according to our needs so let's just name it netflix logo moving on we'll be creating another div inside which we'll be putting the other two items which are the language drop down menu and the sign in button so we'll give this div a class called nav bar nav items we are calling it items because within this div we'll be adding two items that is the language drop down menu and the sign in button let's create another div inside this in which we'll be creating the language drop down menu and we'll name it as we'll name it as nav item that is the first item that we'll be creating and the first item which we are creating is the drop down container inside this we'll be using the select tag which is used for creating drop down menus and uh, we'll name it as languages and let's give it a class called language drop down inside this you can give options i'm sorry option value let's keep it as first one as english and second as hindi now what we want is by default this drop down menu should display english so we will write selected here so that the drop down menu by default displays english you can add other languages here as well but that's all that we'll be needing as of now so let's move on after this we have another dev class which is nav item 2 that is the sign in button we'll use the button tag here to add the sign in button and let's give it a class called sign in button and here it will say sign in all right so let's see whether these changes are implemented here or not yes they are so we have this drop down menu wherein we have two languages that are english and hindi and we have the sign in button right over there so that was all that we'll be needing inside our navigation bar and now here we have created a common class for the entire navigation bar that will have some css attributes which will write shortly and within these we have uh, specific classes that are assigned to the navigation bar uh, to the 
navigation bar items that are the languages drop down menu and the sign in button let's move on to the styling part of this navigation bar as we already have all the three items that we'll be needing for a navigation bar the logo the language drop down and the sign in button so let's get into the styling portion all right so here i'll set the universal selector for removing all the extra spaces that we do not need in our page so i'll assign the margin as zero the padding as zero and the box sizing as border box now as you can see that the netflix background is mostly black and anything whatever is put it is put onto that it is put above that so we'll also design our body structure here wherein we'll give the background color as black and uh, anything that comes on top of it the foreground color should be white we will also set the default font if nothing else is specified there now if you refresh this page you can see that we have got the background color as black and uh, the drop down menu and the buttons these are all in white because we have set the foreground color to white after this let's get into the specification of this class navbar right here because as you can see right now it uh, the logo is quite big and also these are aligned one below the other not one in front of the other as they are supposed to be al uh, al aligned horizontally here but they are not aligned like that so let's get into that so the class is dot nav bar i'll set the position to absolute i do not want any spaces on top of it so i set the top as zero the width should be 100 percent Now one thing that we noticed here that these are coming one below the other and not one after the other horizontally like they are supposed to come. So for that we'll use flex. We'll set the display here as flex. And now if you refresh it, these are coming in a horizontal line. I'll justify content as space between so that there is spaces between the netflix logo and the sign in button and the language drop down we'll see that later when we have uh, resized the netflix logo according to what it is supposed to be now let's get into the specifications of what the div that we have created inside which the logo is uh, placed what that div should be like so we have named this class as navbar netflix will will set the width as 125 pixel and will set the height as 100% now let's see all right we still need to do some changes here so we have to alter the class right here which we have named as navbar nav items so when we'll do this i'll keep the display here as flex as well and the gap should be 10 pixels Okay, now let's get into the logo which we have placed. We'll get into the class navbar, uh, not navbar, Netflix logo. This class right over here, which we have assigned to the image. So the 
logo will be 100% both in width and height because we have set the division width and height here where we have kept the logo but the image the size image will always be 100% yes so we have the logo assigned right here we have the logo on the leftmost corner and we have the drop down menu here and we have the sign in button but as you can see, the logo is quite aligned to the leftmost corner and we do not need it like that. We need some spacing here. We need some spacing here. So for that, we'll add some padding to the nav bar. Let's say we'll add a padding of 3% and 5%. So now you can see that the spacing is uh, justified there and the Alignment of all these are in perfect inclination towards the original website, Netflix website. One thing that we'll specify here is the Z index. We'll specify the Z index here as when we will be putting the background image for this one, then the, then the navigation bar might overlap. The background image might overlap the navigation bar and we might not be able to see the navigation bar right over here. So we'll put the Z index, which will, which will tell the stack order, which will tell the stack order in which the navigation bar should be above the background image and everything else that is there on the web page. So that was all about the logo. Now let's move on to the language dropdown menu that we created. We'll keep the background as transparent. We don't need any border, so we'll keep the border as none. And the color of the text should be white. Let's see, yes, we have got this here. But right now, as you can see, there is one thing missing from here. That is this globe icon. We do not have this globe icon and we do not have this white border that is right over here. We do not have it in our page as of now. So for putting the globe icon, I'll head over to a site called Font Awesome CDN. And we'll go down here and when, then we'll just copy paste this link into our head. We'll just copy paste this link into our head and when, then we'll go to the website again. We'll go to the icons and we can search an icon here. So let's say, for example, we search globe because that is what we need right now. So this is the globe icon. And let's say that we need, we'll copy this link right here into the class where we have put our drop down menu. So. I'll put this here. Now, when we go to our web page, we can see that this globe icon is present here. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to put a border across this. We need to put a white border across this drop down menu. So, let's get into designing that. We'll take the class drop down container. And then we'll set the border as one pixel solid white because we need a white border there and we'll set the border as one pixel solid white. We'll set the padding to let's say 0 0.4 rem. The border radius because we need a 
a slightly curved border as you can see right here this border is not quite rectangular it is a bit curved and ours is a bit ours is purely rectangular so we'll put border radius for the curved edges so we'll put the border radius as let's say four pixels and the background for the drop down menu Let's check this. So yes, we have got a curved border right here and uh, we have got these options, these language options. Now our logo is ready, our drop down menu is ready. Let's get into designing our sign in button. Dot sign in button. So we also need a border for this, which should be the color that Netflix has. So the color code for Netflix red color is DC0030F. And we'll make the background color as the same. Now you can see it is red, but we need this color, we need this sign in to be white here. So Let's set the color as white and we'll do the padding. Let's say 0 0.25 rim and 0 0.5 rim. We'll also give the border radius as 4 pixels because this also needs to be curved a bit. Now let's check our sign in button. It's still small, so we have to resize it. So let's alter the height as, uh, let's say 35 pixels and the width as 100 pixels. So now you can see that the drop down menu and the sign in button are perfectly aligned and we have our navigation bar ready. Next up, we have the body, we have the main content of this page we have created the navigation bar we have created the logo these are language drop down and the sign in button now let's get on to the things that come below that that is these text these email address bar and the background image and these cards so we'll come to the main section and we'll create a section here which will give the class as Hero. Inside this section, we'll create a div that will contain the background image that will have a container which will have the background image. So we'll create a div here. Background image container and we'll use the image tag here. I have already downloaded the images, so I'll give the source from this. If you want, you can also dire uh, directly download this background image from the Netflix site itself. You can save this image and it will be saved in your system. Let's give the alt as background image and we'll give a class here, BG image. So let's see, we must have got the background image right over here. Yes, we have this right here. And now the problem with this is that the image is overflowing. It is not exactly fitting into this window. It is overflowing. The image is a bit zoomed in than the original image that we put here. So for that, let's get into styling this and we'll see some things here. Firstly, we have the
I'll put the width here as 100% and the 100% all right now this was for the container which has our image inside of it let's get into editing the image applying the properties on the image I'll do similar here as I've done with the Netflix logo. I'll give the width as 100%, the height as 100% as well. And I'll write here object fit as cover so that the image, image is covering the entire window. Now, as you can see, the image earlier was a bit zoomed in. It was overflowing. It was not covering the entire window, but now it is. So we changed this using object uh, object fit and we assigned it as cover. Now, one more thing is you can see that on the original Netflix side, you have a black hue, you have a black gradient on, on the top of the background image. The background image is not quite visible. It is not quite as, uh, as vivid as the image. It has a little bit of a black gradient on top of it. So for that, we'll create another div, which we'll give it the class as background overlay. Now let's get into designing this overlay. I'll set the position here as absolute. I'll write inset here as zero as I do not want margin on either side of the page. I do not want it on the top, left, right or bottom. So instead of using all the four attributes differently, we can use just inset as one and it is a shorthand for the margin attribute. I'll set the width as 100% the height as 100% as well and now I'll give the background color so for the background we are going to be using the RGBA attribute we are going to be using the RGBA property because we need a very transparent and a very little color over there we do not need a very solid color I'll keep this as 0.4. All right, so let's see. Yes, as you can see, the image has now got a black gradient to it and it is not as vivid and as uh, clearly visible as it was before. So it kind of resembles what we have here on the original Netflix site. Moving on to the next portion. Now we have uh, put the background image correctly and we have done, we are done with the navigation bar. Now let's move on to these text and this email address bar that is right here. So firstly, we'll be creating, we'll be putting these text inside our code. So let's create another div. And we'll give the class as hero card. Inside this div, I'm using the H1 tag because I want the text to be bold and I want the text to be acting as a header here. So we'll give this a class as well. And uh, let's call this hero title. Inside this, we will write the text that we have here. And as you can see, these texts are aligned in two lines. These texts are aligned, uh, not aligned in one single line. Like it is written unlimited movies, TVs, you have a line break and then you have shows and more. So for this, we will use the BR attribute that is the break tag. Let's write this here and let's see what we get. Okay, so we cannot see the text right now. Let's uh, design it first and then we will move on to see how it is. And as I said earlier, we are going to be adding a break tag here because we need the text to be in two different lines. So we're going to add a break tag right here. Okay. 
the other text that we require over here i'm going to take it inside the h2 tag and uh, i'll give it a class then the text that we need here is this watch anywhere cancel anytime so i'm just going to copy paste it right from here and i'll paste it here now the next thing that we have is this this text right over here so we'll use the paragraph tab for it we don't need to use the h tag for this we'll use the paragraph tab and we'll give this a class as well let's say hero description and we will copy this text right from here now the thing which i would like to add here is we need this entire text in just one line we need this entire text in a single line so it might be possible that this text is a bit long so it might be getting elongated into two lines but since we need it at one line we are gonna add the no break tag here and we'll put this content inside the no break tag so it will come into a single line so the first class that we are going to take up here is hero card under which we have the hero title the hero subtitle and the hero description so let's get started with this here i'll keep the position as absolute and the top here to 30 percent as if i'll not put this if i'll not put this then you can see the text is below this picture the text is below the background picture but we want it above the background picture and approximately 30 percent below the navigation bar so i'll take top as 30 percent then the text alignment will be center display is going to be flex and the flex direction is column we also need some gapping between the elements of this so we'll assign the gap as 10 pixel moving on to the title we'll keep the font weight as uh, 600 and the font size as 2 rem after the, this we have two more classes that is the subtitle and the description but uh, we don't need different css classes to describe their properties so we'll use it in one itself so here i'll go with hero subtitle description keep the font weight as 400 and the font size as 1 rem now as we can see that this text is uh, 30 percent 30 percent down from the top side but it is still aligning to the extreme left so we'll also add some left spacing here uh, we want it to be in the center so let's say 50 percent all right no uh let's try to keep it 30 percent as well so yes we get the desired text in the middle when we use the 30 percent attribute from the left and the top side but as you can see this text is still very small and we want it to be we want it to be a bit on the larger side we want it to be more big than that 
so i'll change the font size here to 3 rem and this one to maybe 1.3 so this text is now yes this text is now perfectly in the size that we want it to be but yet it is not in the center so we'll decrease this left spacing by let's say 5% we'll make it 25% and now yes now we have got it uh, perfectly in the center and it is the size which we want it to be next up is the email address box and this get started button so let's hop on to that and since we want this email address tag and the get started button both to be in the same line so we'll again use the no break tag here for the email address we'll take input type and we'll change it to email We'll also write placeholder here and we will write email address. The placeholder is a temporary text which uh, shows which shows whenever you are about to write a text and it uh, automatically disappears when you write something in it. So we have added the email address tag and uh, let's add the button which says get started we'll also assign classes to these we'll give this the class email and we'll give this the class as We'll give this the class as get started. Now, as you can see that we have got this email address tag right here and the get started button right here. Now, all we have to do is we have to align these in uh, below this, below this text, we have to align these both. So, firstly, we'll go with the email. I'll give it the width of let's say 450 pixel, height of approximately 60 pixel, color black as whatever the email will be entering, it will be black in color, and the padding as 0 0.25 rem and 0 0.5 rim next up i'll give the border radius as the border is not supposed to be absolutely rectangular it is a bit curved on the edges so let's give the border radius as three pixels and the border color would be white after this we'll go to the get started button so We'll keep the font size as large and the width as 170 pixel, height as 60 pixel. Background color will be the same which we have used for the Netflix sign in button and the border will be same colored as well so let's see what our page looks like all right so the email address and the get started button are perfectly aligned here however the get started button is white in color and we still have black here and we have this symbol missing so we'll add that and we'll assign the color as white yes it's perfect now as you can see there is no space between these two this text and this box there is no space between these two however in the original side there is some spacing between these so what i can do to create some spacing between these is add some break tags here so let me add few break tags here 
now let's take a look at it oh it's gone to the left just one second uh let i refresh this tab and now it's working properly so all right so that one was pretty much what we had to do for this section uh, as you can see this section is perfectly just like the actual netflix side and it has some minor alterations but more or less it does look like the netflix side so let's move on to the next part the next section that we are going to create is for these cards here right here these cards or these boxes which you can see and it is quite easy because you just need to create one uh, one card like this and then you can just uh, copy the other rest of the three like this and we'll just have to change the text alignment and the picture and the animation this is a gif so we'll just change the alignment for that now this section is over let us create a new section and we'll give this section a class as let's say style cards inside this we're going to be creating a div div class and uh, we'll call it card1 inside this again we'll create another division because we need the text separately and we need the images and the gif to be styled separately so we'll create a container inside which we will put the text and the gif or the uh, images that are put there so we'll create another div and uh, we'll give it a class as description 1 now inside this uh, when you go here you can see there is this uh, there is this huge text right over here and there is this paragraph beneath it so we can use the h1 tag for this and we'll use the h3 tag for this text so i'll put the h1 tag here and i'll just copy paste this content after this i'll put the h3 tag for the text that is beneath it and i'll copy paste here this as well uh now as you can see that this text is divided into three lines this text is in uh, three lines uh, so we have to give break tags after the letters or after the words which after which we need a new line we need the text to be aligned in a new line as you can see that this is all in one line here but we need it in three separate lines so let's just add the break tags we need one break tag after this x box so we'll add one break tag here and we need the second break tag after and so we have added two break tags and now as you can see we have our text in three different lines as it is on the site after this we'll add the image here which is uh, which is the this tv icon right here this tv image right here and i'll add this uh, gif on top of it using the z index and i'll assign first of all i'll put the image of the tv on the background and then i'll put this uh, video this gif on top of it so i've downloaded this image as well but as i've told if you want you can just use this image right from the internet or you can download it it for yourself from anywhere i'll keep the alt as let's say netflix tv next up we'll use the video attribute for putting the gif in the foreground of the image of that tv where that we have put earlier and we'll give the type here as video/mp4 
Now you also need to have some attributes for this video, which will tell if the video will be muted or will it play sound or will it auto play or will it play on loop. So I'll break this source right here. And I'll assign a video class as video one. I'll give it a property of auto playing. Plays in line. And it should be muted. And it will go on loop. Uh, we need to write source src here. So as you can see here, the TV image, the TV logo that we put is also here and the GIF that we put is also here. Now all we, all we need to do is align this. We need to align all this into one line and we need to put the text over here and this along with this GIF over here on the right. So mm -hmm. let's just create the other cards as well and then we'll do the alignment for all of them together. We'll do the styling for all of them together. I'll create another div here and I'll give it the class as card2. Now inside this card2, I'll put the image tag for the image of the second card and I'll give the alt as Netflix by. I'll do the same thing inside this. I'll create one H1 tag and I'll create one H3 tag. And within these, I'll put the text that are supposed to be there. So this one will be inside the H1 tag. And this right here will be inside the H3 tag. Now, as you can see, even in this H1 tag, we have a break here and we have a break here as well. So let's just put that. We'll put a break after this. And we'll put a break after this. Mm, yes, we have our image right here and we have these uh, text as we wanted to, to be. Similarly, the third card, I'm going to name this class as card three. And inside this, I'll make another division that we will call description three. Now we are doing it so that we can put the video and the, the GIF and the images that we want to put properly and we can align them and we can style them properly according to how we need them to be displayed. I'll, I'll again use the H1 and the H3 tags here and just copy paste the text. We also have a break here after on. So let's put a break here after on. All right. Uh, we have still to put our picture and the GIF here. So let's do that. We'll use the video attribute in the similar manner that we have used above. So I'll just copy paste it and I'll change the source of the video. I'll change the video that we are putting here. We'll put this and we'll change the class to video two. Uh, that's it. We have added all the things that we require to add here. Uh, 
uh, the video is not displaying one second all right it is right here the we right now the video and the image are apart but we'll put it on top of each other when we are styling this so let's get into styling now since we've kept all these cards inside the classes called card one card two and card three and we have to put a similar look for all three of them so we'll just take them all together I'll take the border on the top as uh, you can see right here that uh, we have some grayish borders, thin grayish borders on the top of each of them. So I'll take the border on the top of 8 pixel and uh, I'll use the RGB code for this. So it is. And six nine. All right. Now we'll give the padding of fifty pixel. Now we have the specific card styling. So firstly, we'll go on card one, and uh, I'll give the position as relative. I'll put the display as inline grid. Uh, now inline grid creates an inline level box for the container however it doesn't know if it has to be in column or if it has to be in rows for that we'll use grid template as columns and we'll give them as 50% and 40%. After that the text alignment for the first box should be left and the alignment of all the items should be in center and i'll give the basic padding here all right so let's see what this looks like so as you can see now we have got the text on the left hand side and we have got this image on the right hand side as we needed it to be now we'll add this uh, gif on top of this so that it looks as we can see here we also have the spacing here a little less than what it is supposed to be so we'll change the styling for the description one class that we created and we'll add a padding here to the left as let's say 80 pixel so now you can see that it has got spaced out and it is exactly like how we see it here moving on to the card one video the gif that we have given here for the for the same we have taken the class as video I'll set the position as relative. Width as 100%. Height as 54%. You can alter the width and height according to how you see, how you want to clone any website. I am doing this because uh, it is in proportion to what we have to make right now and you can do this according to your own needs now we'll use the grid column and grid row which uh, specifies the inline start and the inline ed edge uh, of uh, uh, a grid area it uh, specifies where to start and where to end the grid the grid row I'll give the Z index of this as minus one. Now let's move on to the image for the same. And here I'll give grid column as by two. So 
so let's go to our website and see all right we have the video here but we don't have the image modified yet um all right we have to just use img here not image so let's see now yeah so the gif is perfectly aligned on top of this and we have our text also over here however we still need to alter our text because this text appears more big in font than this one so let's get on to that now we have used h1 and h3 tags for all the uh, all the text that we have put here and uh, we will edit it according to that itself so we'll take the class here style cards which we took initially when we are creating this section so we'll take the card style cards and uh, firstly we'll style the h1 tags so font size is going to be 3 rem padding will be 1 rem and we also need a little padding towards the left so we'll add padding left as 0 because uh, when you see here when we have not added padding left this text doesn't appear to be in alignment with the text that is below it so this text isn't in proper alignment with this one so now when we put padding left is equal to 0 you can see that this text is now in perfect alignment with the text below it so that was it for the h1 tags now let's move on to the h3 tags I'll take the font size at as 1.6 rem and uh, I'll take the line height as 2 rem so that we have some spacing between the h1 and the h3 texts and also we have some spacing between these texts that are written over here. Uh, there is some issue with the break tag that we used uh, so it is appearing in four lines let's check that. So let's suppose that we remove this break tag from here. So now we are getting it in three lines exactly as we wanted it here to happen. So perfect, we are done with our first card. Now we'll move on to the second and third one. And also as you can see, since we have uh, styled these uh, style cards for all the h1 and all the h3 tags that we have so all these texts are already in perfect uh, alignment and in perfect shape as when as we want them to be and we don't need to make any more changes to the, these texts also one thing that i remember just now that we have put div class as description one and description three right over here but we haven't put description two here so we'll change this We'll give this the class as description 2 and after that we'll put all this inside this div. So let's get on to styling the second card that we have by the name of card 2. The position is going to be relative again display is nine grid let's do one thing that uh, it is quite same for this the card one that we created here the card two is uh, quite same with only some minor changes so, so let's will copy paste this from here And this will be reversed. This will now be 40% and 50%. Let's check. Okay, we still have to uh, edit the image. And we still need to give the padding for the description too. So we'll give left padding as 
moving on to the card 3 so the card 3 and card 1 are uh, totally similar since they both have the text on the left hand side and the image or the gif that is there on the right hand side so we'll just copy everything from card 1 and we'll paste it here inside card 3 now card 3 also has a gif and an image as you can see here it also has a image and it also has a gif that is to be placed on top of this image so let's style that before that we'll also give the description 3 styling we'll give the padding left as 80 pixel and we'll give padding right as 20 pixel after that card 3 image so we'll give the width here as 110% uh, these measurements are just relative to what we are making and these can vary from side to side and they can vary from requirement to requirement per person next up the grid column and the grid row then we have the card 3 video so inside this we'll again put the position as relative we'll give the top margin as minus 87 pixels i'll show you why we are doing that left as 125 pixel We'll align the width as 65% and the height as 78%. After that, we'll also put grid column here. And the grid row. And the Z index as minus 1. So we're all done with this section and uh, now let's see what it looks like. All right, perfect. So we have these gray borders here as well. We have the GIFs running over on our images which we put in the background. We have the perfectly aligned text and that is it. Now we want to add the footer. We want to add this part right over here. So we'll come out of the main section and we'll add the footer tag here we'll give this a class called footer and inside this footer as you can see here we have some columns we have some uh, links here which are arranged in the uh, in the form of columns and here are they are listed like this so we'll use unordered lists and we'll divide them into columns and then we can design this in a quite similar manner like it is here so inside this tag first of all if we see we have this text over here so we'll just add this using the p tag and we will copy paste this text from here to here now after this we'll create a division inside which we will put our unordered list and we will classify this division as the footer call or footer columns so let's start adding our unordered list over here and we need we have uh, four items right here so we'll add we'll just copy paste this for four times and inside these tags 
we'll copy paste the content from here And the last one is speed test. We'll create similar unordered list in the same manner so that we can uh, write these as well, the remaining ones. And then after we'll just change the text that is inside of it. So I have changed, changed these terms right over here and we are pretty much done with our HTML code. So if you see right here, you can see that these all are there in the place of the footer. Now all we have to do is style it and it will go into accordance with this perfectly. I'll take the footer class here. We'll write footer here and we'll also write footer A for all the text that we have written inside the footer. The color is gray, so the color code for the gray is 999 and the font size is going to be 0.9 rem. After this, we'll style the this text right over here which we have put in the p tag so we'll write footer p and we have to put a margin on its bottom because we need some spacing between that and the unordered list that we have created so let's put the margin as 1.5 rem after that we'll go on to the columns The display will be grid. The grid template columns will be repeating. Repeating for four times and within one fraction of space. And the gap between these grids will be To rem. We'll give the properties for the list items that is that is inside the footer. So footer li that is short for list items. We'll give the line height of one point nine. So that is pretty much it and. Uh, this is the footer on the original website and this is the footer that we have got right over here. Now as you can see that uh, it is quite aligned to the extreme left here but here we have some space uh, from the left as well as from the right hand side. So we'll create some padding. We'll create some padding over here and we'll let's say padding left is uh, 50 pixel. And we'll put the same inside the text that is above that. So now you can see that there is some space here as well. And we are uh, pretty much done with the landing page of Netflix. Firstly, we started with the navigation bar wherein we put in the Netflix logo, the language drop down menu and the sign in button. Then we moved on to putting the background image here and we put a black gradient over it due to which uh, the display was not quite vivid as it is not in the original Netflix site. It has a black gradient over it and we have put that on our page as well. After that, we put these texts here and then we put the email address box, the get started button. We have these cards here which have images and GIFs on them and the text right over. 
after that we have the footer so that was all about it and in the next video i'm going to be designing the main page of netflix which will look somewhat like this so in the next video we're going to be creating the main page and uh, until then the landing page is all set and it is similar to the one we have on netflix so this was all about this video and i hope that everything is clear thank you so much